worse. It's really bad. Dude, your audio is fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Perfect. Wait, I'm going to turn off this light because I think it's... Get the ambiance. Ooh. Oh, so much ambiance here now, dude. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Perfect. I'm well, ready. Well, congratulations on uh, being the very first winner of the weekly leaderboard. Thank you. I worked very hard for it. <laughs> yeah. This week's going to be insane. There's a lot of people competing now. I'm like, oh, gosh. People, people are getting, yeah. getting real. They're ready. I saw, I saw Robert. He is, is doing very good. Yeah, Robert. And he just, he just joined the Accelerated community. So. And he just joined. You're going to see and him. Adam. And Adam. Oh, he, I mean, Robert already passed me. And Adam, too. So. I know. They're yeah. all fire. It's okay. You're, you're living your best life right now. Enjoy. Yeah, I am. I, I did tell you, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going on a trip next Monday and I'm going to be off offline. So I won't be either on the streams or uploading much. Oh, we're or gonna, uploading at all. We're going to be so sad, dude. No, it's okay, man. You just take the take the win, man. Like, it, at your age, you just graduated. You're having heaps of fun. Just enjoy it. When you want to have fun, enjoy and have fun. And, like, something that was so hard for me was, like, I would always, like, feel guilty because I was having fun and then I wasn't actually enjoying myself. And then when I was practicing, I was like, oh, man, I missed out. And then, like, I don't know. That is something I, I, I was thinking about recently. And today, actually, after after the class, I need to get in the bath and go out with my friends. So <laughs> yeah. we're, we're celebrating. We're just it's, – it's been a crazy week. Ever yeah. since we got out of school, we were just, like – Day after day after day, just celebrate and celebrate and celebrate. That's fantastic. And like, yeah, the it's dream, great. the dream, man. High school life, and then and then you just now we got to begin the grind of you just work really really hard to get closer and closer to Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's the goal. All that right. is the goal. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're really lucky because obviously you're in the accelerate. I know where you're at. I know what your kind of goal is. Are and we've already had a chat like this before, but um, yeah. out of this lesson, what do you want to get out? Like what, what would help you the most? Okay, so that is something I've been thinking about ever since yesterday when we were talking about uh, in the stream, like at what time we were going to do this. I started thinking, what, what the heck do I want to use this 45 minutes of Luan? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I don't really know. I'm not so sure what I want. Like I, I was thinking maybe uh, songwriting, but I mean, I do know you have the songwriting course, which I haven't gone through. I, I, I'm, if I'm being completely honest, I haven't gone through any of the courses. I've gone through your videos, like yeah. the YouTube videos, but I haven't gone through the courses. That's fine. You, um, you don't need to go through the courses, like majority of the people that create like these big courses no one even watches them i mean i don't even watch the ones that i sign up for we sign up for the community and you can see you're getting better well i'll i'll, t I'll take the reins if you don't know exactly what you want to do i i know what i i want to help you with so <laughs> okay <laughs> so, so basically what i want to figure out with you is how you're going with the accelerated because um Normally, you, like people get inspired. I know this. I do this all the time. You get inspired. You start grinding. You do like a week and you're like, oh, this was so cool. I could do this all the time. And then week two comes and you're like, shit, what do I do? Like, because you, you're running out of steam. You know, that, that motivation thing has kind of disappeared. So I'm just curious, like, how are you going with your practice? What are you doing with your practice every day? How often are you picking up your guitar? things like that okay um i i turned on something i don't know if you hear me differently uh yeah maybe i think i heard something okay. change slightly yeah okay <laughs> but is it better like this or how it was before uh what was the setting you changed is it, it says like... original sound for musicians okay yeah cool that means that if you play guitar um it won't like cut out the guitar whereas most of the time they like will suppress certain frequencies so that when you start playing guitar it like starts muting shit <laughs> oh, okay. 
Yeah. All right. So now answering the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I I feel like I have actually improved a lot, like since I got into the into the community, like not only on in my guitar playing, which I don't feel has improved uh, as much as my singing. I know it has improved a lot, but man, like I feel that my singing, my confidence, my just like being able to set up a camera in front of me and and play and sing at the same time uh, if it wasn't for school you know and I don't think I could have done that you know because the way you encourage us to post the videos like the format of posting the videos in itself it's like a great way for us to be able to to start getting comfortable with that and yeah. just doing that I feel ha has just improved a lot my singing through, through yeah and so it's been like most of your practice has just been like you're like all right what am i going to post today in the community and then you're like okay well like you just work on that is that essentially how you're doing your practice that's that's basically how, what my thought process is so when i was going to school <laughs> uh i came back from school and if i hadn't practiced at school because uh, these last few months, uh, I got to take my guitar every day to school because we were like not having classes anymore. You know, we, we had like free periods yeah. here and there. So I, if I hadn't practiced at school, I just uh, came home and just played whatever, whatever I wanted, you know, like, yeah. because I, 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 today I was watching one of your videos in which you, you said, uh, that one of the best practice and I, I think you haven't practiced in like six or seven years something you said something like that and that what you did was just play and play and play and play and just keep getting better through playing and I think that like resonated a lot with me because I don't have a, a like strict practice routine you know Perfect. I don't sit down and practice my scales like you know yeah. I just sit down grab my guitar I've been mostly playing on my acoustic guitar I do have my 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 silver sky, but um, I get lazy with it. You know, I don't want to. It's 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 like getting the guitar, go plugging through, it in, you go turning the it on the. Don't worry. And then, <laughs> yeah, that I just prefer getting the acoustic, which is just like okay. Yeah, perfect. I'm just getting getting it in. So basically, what I do is just grab my my acoustic guitar. Let's say. Well, when I was in my, without my John Mayer de detox, what I would do is I would listen to, to John Mayer songs throughout the whole day. Yeah. And when I got home, I was like, okay, I want to learn this song. Yeah. So let's say uh, I heard Stop This Train. Yeah. So I said, okay, I want to learn Stop This Train. So what I would do is uh, put on a video of a performance of Stop This Train, watch it hear it back again and again and again <clears throat> eventually if i cannot uh play it by ear <laughs> i would just search up a, a tutorial yep. and just try to go through there for i think i chose the worst example because stop this train <laughs> for me i think it would be impossible to get it by ear it's it's a hard song but, it's a yeah, it's, it's so a really simple but so good but you gotta yeah the harmony behind it was written by like Two of the best music. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> so it's like Pino. tricky. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. But I, th that's basically what I would do. And then if I liked what I what I practiced during during my session after school up until your stream, because I would normally post. See, t right now it's seven forty eight for me, right? Seven forty eight p.m. for me, and you start your streams at nine p.m. Okay. for me so in about an hour and a little bit more and uh well i got i got from school at like 4 5 p.m so from 5 up until 9 it would be like practice eating and practice and then watching luan from 9 to whatever <laughs> yeah you know from 9 to about 12 p.m here yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, 
It's your fault I wasn't getting sleep, Luan. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> not, not you being a young party kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not getting sleep, but we already know you're about to leave and go party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But um, what I would do is... Uh, Usually, uh, I, I usually told you, I, I typed in chat, okay, now I'm going off to practice or to upload or whatever. Yep. So, after watching your stream for a while, I would hop off, grab my guitar, practice a bit what I've been practicing. Or, sometimes what would happen is you would play something on stream or you would practice something or explain something on stream and I, I would say, okay, I want to upload me trying this yeah to school cool what well, kind of what happened for edge of desire because yeah. edge of desire is a song that i already knew how to play right but i hadn't played it in a long time and then you played it on stream and i was like okay i want to give this a shot yeah. so i started practicing and then uploaded it just like that and and basically that that would be it every every day just playing and playing and playing what what i wanted or what I was inspired to play by you or by hearing uh, an, a song or, you know? Yeah. I don't have like a practice routine. Like. Okay, good. No, that's good. That, that gives me really good context of what's going on. So the reason I, I asked that question is because I obviously know your goal is to get into Berkeley, get a scholarship, make it happen. Um, so there's there's going to be, I'm going to make a video on this. I've been thinking, it's, it's been on my mind for the past, like pretty much ever since we had that conversation, I was like, I need to make like a 45 minute guide on like everything you need to do to save money for Berkeley and every single way that you can do that, like and succeed and, and win. But I just have to make sure I build uh, a bunch of courses before that. So then I can then do that video. But for you, um, we can just do like a crash course on what I've been thinking. Cause Basically, for your Berkeley goal, you need to be able to play, you need to be able to hear, you need to be able to understand music, like the theory element. You read, right? I think you need to read music too. That 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 one is they'll teach you that shit. Um, you don't need to be like that guy. Um, like honestly, they will teach you it, and you are a person who likes to learn, and you will. There's about like seven or eight courses that you might have to take out of all of the courses that you do at Berkeley. And like, those are the only ones that matter. And honestly, you, you probably don't actually need to at this point, you could just like reach out to friends in your, in your classes. Like I, I'm not going to lie. Tony Ann did majority of our tonal harmony and counterpoint. When we did tonal harmony and, uh, and counterpoint at Berkeley, Tony Ann, our boy, the piano prodigy, he hooked in and he did all of our homework while he was on tour with chain smokers. So no. <laughs> that's, that's how, no yeah, I, I got an A thanks to Tony N. So <laughs> <laughs> they can't take away my degree. So, you know, like you, you find ways to be creative, in, uh, yeah, like that. you know, <laughs> but they, um, maybe they can, who knows, but, but I did learn quite a bit about counterpoint, but he went through my homework and he made it like, very nice. So, um, and plus he was bored as hell. He was like, man, can somebody send me something to do? I, I need, I need to do something. I just keep hanging around here. So, but, uh, but basically the way, um, you, you got to have the playing down, you got to have a good ear, you got to know theory, but not theory in the sense of like, um, like knowing what, like what note, like no notation and shit. Like that's so whatever. Um, and then the fourth one, um, I had it more creative. You need to be creative. So when I say creative, um, Berkeley doesn't like uh, people that can literally copy paste. Like that, those are not the people that Berkeley are like. I'm going to give you a scholarship. Like the actual wording on my scholarship when I got it was, you have the potential to be like when they were when they were picking me out of everyone because there was a hundred percent better players than me. Um, in their mindset, I was the one who was creative about my approach. I was versatile in my skill and I was also a good student. So I already had a track record of like great grades at, um, at a previous college. So then when I went in, they were like, let's go. Um, we already know he works hard because when you go to Berkeley, 
um, they're going to be the thing that's hard about Berkeley is not um, oh, say hi to your family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the squad. Uh, but yeah, so can I keep talking? Oh, are you chatting? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is when you go to Berkeley, you're going to be jumping in and um, you're going to be tested because you're going to have to do a lot of subjects that are sucky and boring. You're going to have to do tonal harmony. You're going to have to learn about jazz harmony. You're going to, there's, just, there's so many things you're going to have to learn that are really, really not fun. Um, and when Berkeley is vetting students, they're trying to find people who work hard because once you go through the like honeymoon period of Berkeley, now you actually have to do work. And then that's where they're like, they need to know whether you can do work or not. So we want to make sure we build up a skill set where one, we know that you can play and you're good at playing. The other one, we know you have a good ear because part of your, your audition process will be an ear training exercise. They'll just play shit and then you got to replicate it. And the faster you are at connecting with it, with your ear, the better. The third one will be how good's your harmony and like your understanding of music theory, which is going to reflect in your playing because you'll be able to create nuances in your playing through that knowledge. And then compounding from that, like if you know that stuff in the harmony and you play, now you can be creative. So you can be very, very clever. When I did my first audition for Berkeley and I got accepted, I did Stairway to Heaven, but I played like three feels. I did a bunch of funk changes. Like I literally did a funk version of Stairway to Heaven and they were like, oh my God, that was sick. I. And so like I did the first intro exactly how it's played. And then they were like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and then I just like blasted into this like funk groove and everything. And I wasn't sure that I should do that for my audition, but um, there was a really, really cool uh, guitarist that came to our college who he was the guy who play, he wrote and recorded um, the ABC groove. Uh, for Jackson 5. He did a bunch of stuff for them. I can't remember his name. Oh. Louis Shelton, that's his name, guitarist. And it, and he happened to be walking through the studios and I was playing um, and practicing my audition piece. And he's like, I was like, oh yeah, my goal is to go to Berkeley and do all that stuff. Uh, do you want to hear the piece that I'm going to do? And he's like, yeah, let's have a listen. So I played it for him and he was like, dude, that's exactly what they want. They want original because it's so easy to be an imitator. So Burke, so for you, it's going to be like, where are you going to be able to go? That's why I suggested like, stop listening to John Mayer. You want to be someone who can do all the John Mayer stuff, but you don't, you're not John Mayer. Cause there is a lot of guitarists that sound like John Mayer at Berkeley. <laughs> I, I, I imagine. And, and every time I would play like, um, cause I play the Ain't No Sunshine, right? You know, when I play Ain't No Sunshine, I don't know yeah, how yeah. John Mayer does it. But when I listened to John Mayer do it, I replicated his feel and I was like, cool, I'm just going to do it my way. And then other guitarists would come in and be like, man, it sounds like the John Mayer one, but it's not. And it sounds really cool. What are you doing? Because then they're like, it's, it should sound like this. And that's the problem that they have is like, it should sound. It's like, no. And it should not sound. Yeah. They're, they're like, exciting. it should be like this. And it's like, well, no, music should not be like anything. Like you should create, like you'll get the tools and then do whatever you want. And so that's going to be the part that's going to be like, once you hit that stage in your musicianship, you're going to be like an absolute savage. And then that's going to be the part where I want you to be at as a musician. So that when you go to Berkeley, you're not trying to learn music first. You're trying to extract, extract stories. You're trying to learn blueprints. You're trying to collaborate with people like, so many people who go to Berkeley are going there to learn and that's not really what you want to be there for because the actual learning, like going and doing the classes is not what made me very good. It's sitting down, talking to the professors, connecting with professors, learning about their experiences and how to get better and things like that. But yeah, and people in but, general. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. If you can learn people's stories, you can learn how to build a life. And a lot of musicians are like, well, oh, if I can play all my scales, then x will happen no nothing like that happens you know you need to learn how to build a career and, and build like a, a future for yourself otherwise you know you'll go to berkeley and like majority of the people i know that go to berkeley they'll go and then they finish berkeley and then they they do nothing they either go and get another degree 
or and then they have to pay off the debt on the Berkeley or they're just like teaching and playing like a couple of gigs and they just pay off their debt <laughs> and it's not the funnest experience uh <laughs> as anyone you do not want to be sitting on like a couple hundred thousand dollars of debt and it be like that which sucks <laughs> so yeah. so the main so the main point of all of that is i want you to start thinking about your practice in the sense of what's the purpose of oh my god my stupid phone is like blowing up this is what happens during like nine to twelve like my phone is like <laughs> Um, basically we want to go into the practice and we want to be like, all right, what am I going to get out of it today? And how can I build up, um, the muscle of practice? Cause right now you would probably put in like two hours or three hours and you kind of get like, there's not really much more that happens from there. Right. Is it, is like two or three hours is kind of like your, like, it's like the, I did a good session. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the the actual muscle of practice can be trained. The muscle of work ethic can be trained. So your bandwidth right now is probably sitting at like maybe an hour and a half to two hours of effective practice. If we can push that bandwidth up to six hours over the next year, you will be in a complete savage. Like, and in one year, you will be able to get very, very, very good. But that process doesn't happen in like a week or two. So you've already jumped in and you, you've gotten a taste of what it feels like to be consistent. Now, what we want to do is we want to like really double down on that. So what I would like you to do is in your practice, we won't go into like strict practicing. Like you don't want to be like strictly, like, I'm going to do my scales, I'm going to do this. I want you to be like, today I don't know something or actually even better, when you're about to go to bed, I want you to write down and be like, what did I learn today? And you need to audit your practice. Be like, not like, did I learn how to play the song? Because like sometimes you might learn how to play songs pretty easy. But like, what did you learn from the song? Did I get better at understanding my chord progressions? Do I understand my harmony? Do I understand transposition? Do I understand X? Did I get better at hitting the third on this chord? Do, like you will start to get very, very locked in on it. Just for like two or three minutes, just think about what you did that day and things that you got better at. Then the next part of that is write down what you want to get better at tomorrow. And if you okay. set a goal of like, I'm going to get better at X tomorrow and then the next day you wake up, first thing you do is get better at that and you get into that habit every single day, you will get very, very good. And then the, the main part of it will be when you are playing, you want to be pushing your playing. You want to be like every time, even if it is like you see me when I sing all my songs, I'm singing the same songs. I've done them like a hundred times, but every time there's something that I can do to make them better. Am I singing my vowel sounds better? Am I articulating the words better? Am I hitting these chords with a better dynamic range? Am I getting better with my arrangement? Do I have like extra songs I can mash up with it? Do it? I just, I'm trying as many, can I put a lead fill in here that's really tasty I just try as many things as I can. And it's a thing I heard from Jerry Garcia, which is just like every single performance should be your best performance. And if you can do that in the practice room, then when you're doing it on stage and when you're trying to hit levels of like as a performer, you're just going to be so good, just so freaking good. But you just got to understand that right now, like someone like me will tell you, hey, practice six hours to 10 hours a day, which is like, what I was told from like Steve Vai. And then I go and try and do it. And it's like, you can't do it. It's like, this is way too hard. It's like, but Steve Vai doesn't tell you that at the beginning, he didn't practice 10 hours a day. He just played. And then he played so often that getting to four hours a day, getting to five hours a day, getting to six hours a day was rewarding for him. Because your practice will not reward you at the beginning. And ideally what the school is designed to do is that your practice will reward you because you have a community behind you when you post, you'll be like, fuck yeah, boom. And then you can keep going. But at the beginning, you want to be building up the reward system and then your brain is going to start learning that, okay, when I do practice for three or four hours, good things happen. But we are trained as humans that we need shit now. Like 
you are on your phone, you post a video or you like something, you get the dopamine hit now. And I know you were into gaming as well. So like when you're a gamer, it's fucking, you want it now. Yeah. You're like, let's yeah. go. Yeah. You know, everything has yeah. been designed. It's happening all at once. Is... Yeah, they're just like, they're trying to give you as many things as you can. So that yeah. you are literally built for distraction. Like our whole world is built on distraction. And the, the winners are the ones that know how to turn it off and then to be able to train themselves to get like, you know, delayed gratification towards whatever skill they're trying to acquire. So if you can hack that, bro, it's going to be very, very, it's going to be a big win. It's something I struggle with. I have a huge, like I work hard, but man, it is, it is really hard, really hard to push yourself to, to stop that, to stop watching like socials, to stop fucking playing a game, stop doing anything like that. Stop anything that might set you up for failure for, to think like, oh, what's the next shiny object? What's the next thing? And you just don't push that far and you don't dig deeper. That's the stuff that holds you back. And so your goal over the next, you know, three months, like if you, like, especially right now, no bueno, go have fun. Like you're enjoying yourself. You're, you're on high school, you're graduating, do your Cancun thing. But when you come back, you want to come back and you want to be like, all right, I'm ready. Like, I know that the next three months of my my life is going to suck. I'm going to have fun practicing and the rewards when they come through are going to be good, but the next three months will suck. And you'll be like, your goal, your goal is not to be like, I'm going to be the best musician in three months. Your goal is like, I'm going to be the musician that doesn't quit in three months. If you can do that, that's crazy. Be the musician that when you hit the one hour mark on practice, you're like, I don't want to do it. The amount of times I have, to, I show up to the studio and it's like 11.55 and I'm like, I could just not do this today. Like I would be totally down to just watch One Piece, you know, <laughs> go home, just chill. Like I don't need to do this. I'm not getting paid right now. Like, you know, the, the thoughts come in your head all the time. But, in my, but I'm like, no, this is not like, like the goal of what I want in seven to 10 years cannot be served by doing X. So I'm like, all right, well, just show up. So if you can just show up for yourself every day and you can build up that that bandwidth of practice, you're going to hit five, six hours. And then once you, it compounds like this, by the way. So once you hit the five, six hour mark, bro, that means you can do seven. And then once you get really comfortable with seven, then you can do eight. And then when you can do eight, you can do 10. And then when you're doing 12 hour days, sometimes you'll be like, you'll be like waking up, practicing, doing the songwriting thing, working on this other thing, learning about a little bit of editing, posting some piece of content, then learning another song. Then you're jamming with a bunch of people for like two hours. Then you're going to do a gig and then boom, there's like fucking 11 hours of music and creation and working towards your craft and your goal. And that's, that's the huge unlock that will happen. So yeah, there's, some, there's something I think will help me a lot like to get there. And I, I, I don't know if I, I told you this, but in August, I'm 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 joining like an uh, music academy that that is here in Bogota, which which has like uh, they 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 are partnered with Berkeley. So like, oh, perfect. Yeah, and so it's basically I'm going to go. It's basically like a uh, like college. So I'm gonna go every day, have classes from. I don't know. Okay, my, right now I don't, I don't know. Only thing I'm worried about: how much does it cost? Oh, it's nothing compared to Berkeley. Okay, it's nothing. It's not, okay, cool. It's not. What? Well, yeah, it's. The main reason I say that is information is accessible. You literally have me. Like you do not need to go to a college to learn. The only advantage you would get, for, I would actually say, don't go to it. Like I don't know if. I don't know if you can delay and reach out to them and be like, hey, look, I don't know if you've already paid. Have you already paid for it? Or anything? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. We'll still adapt. But the reason I, I say this, I want you to play. I want you to be out there playing. So I want, like, I'm going to make this uh, six-figure musician course that I'm doing. 
um, which yeah. is going to show you how to get gigs, how to do gigs, how to like market yourself. You need to be out there playing because you need to learn what it feels like to eat shit and you need to learn what it feels like to try and make money as a musician. Because Okay, yeah. When you I get mean, in this in this in this uh like place where I'm going and it's it's got like uh we do classes. I I've already gone to this place but like to a pre pre college yeah. uh, course, you know. Okay. Yeah, which was only on Saturdays. And uh, what we saw there was like two hours of ensemble. So like just playing with 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 other people and just jamming. Yeah. And then like preparing for a con for a big concert, which we already did. Yeah. Um, then music, uh, I mean, ear training. We had an hour of ear training and then an hour of uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say this, like uh, the writing of music, but not songwriting, like in that sense. No, no, not composition, not uh. composition. Like um, they they learn they, they teach us how to uh, do like the treble clef, the oh, bass clef. Oh, so notation. Um, so you you're learning notation, notation of yeah. music. Yeah. Okay, got it. That's good. And like so, yeah. Okay. And then now in the actual college is like that, but more advanced, more hours. Uh, I think there's a harmony class. Uh, there's like, there's a lot of stuff. And also the good thing is that um, when I went there in my pre-college um, course, uh, I, I, I hooked up with a lot of professors, which, um, which gave me a lot of information. And actually one of them I became really friends with, which was my guitar instructor, you know, yeah. and he he is playing gigs like every day, and he he invited me to go with him to to one, and and I did, and yes. I saw him play, and it was amazing, and and then like just being there like gets me a lot of great contacts, you know. Perfect. And I remember one time I went to a party, <laughs> and just at the party I, I met this girl who who went to this to this uh to this like college but to the actual like college yeah. you know not the pre-college to the actual college yeah and we started talking and she and apparently her parents are um like they own a bunch of restaurants which all have music live music perfect live music and so I got that contact and like... Okay, good. So one thing, like I love where your head's at, you're like getting the contacts. That is the first rule of gigging is be good. And then if your goal is like, I'm just gonna get super fucking good, it doesn't matter how many contacts you have because if you're really good and people like you and you're reliable, right. you will get the, the gigs. Yeah. You will just do one the gig game. and then it will be like the next week, there's another gig and then there's another one. The ones that are like super hungry for their gigs, like that they chase the contacts, they're so focused on that, they don't focus on the product and then that that hurts them in the long run. But in the short term, it gets them a lot of gigs, but in the long term, it hurts their whole brand because they just can't level up. My goal for you is to level up, but this is cool. So if you're, at this, if you're going to this college, that's gonna be great. This just means your life just got harder because you're gonna have to do what I tell you to do and you're gonna have to do what they tell you to do. And because you're at this college, you're under the microscope. So your Berkeley audition has begun. That means you get the A's. You become the best student at this college. You need to be, you need to show that every single person in there that might have a friend on Facebook who's part of the Berkeley based department or some person X, blah, 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 whoever it is, you need to be in there and be like, I'm gonna be the best fucking student in here. You're gonna get the A's. You're going to study. You're going to have to make the sacrifices that everyone around you will not make. And I, I'm telling you, this is hard. When I wanted to go to Berkeley and I was studying at my uni, everyone in my uni didn't give a fuck. They straight up did not give a fuck. So there was like 100 people in our co cohort and about 15 people used the facilities. I had to wake up at six in the morning, get ready, drive him to my car, 20 minute drive to the studio where the, the college was. And then I would practice from like 6.37 in the morning until 9.30 in the morning, 10 in the morning. And then I would go to classes. 
So everyone's rocking up to uni. I've already done two and a half hours of practice. And that's how I was able to go from someone who had never sung, never written a song, to then within a year, write a song, sing a song, audition for Berkeley, and get accepted to Berkeley. Every guitarist there was better than me. Every guitarist was better than me. But I was the one who got into Berkeley. And I'm the one who's here now doing what I do. And a lot of them have quit, have got other jobs or whatever they're doing. They've gone and changed their careers, which is totally fine. If your goal is to be in music, you just have to make that sacrifice and it's going to suck because your friends are going to go party and your friends are going to go and do this and you'll be like, oh, I'm going to be missing out on blah, blah, blah. But if your goal is like, hey, I've already, you know, when you say, oh, I feel like I've just missed out on John Mayer, right? You know, I feel like John Mayer's 19 and I've missed out. John Mayer. Dude, today I saw a video which <laughs> just blew my mind. Today I saw a video which was John Mayer at 16 years old. 16. Yeah. Playing Texas Flood by Stevie. Just fucking shredding. But like, and I was like, what? Like, dude. Dude, there's a... This guy, this guy was another thing, you know, he was... There was... There was nothing special about John Mayer. I'm telling you right now. There is nothing special about Ed Sheeran. Nothing special about Taylor Swift. They just did the thing that you're yeah. that you're about you're about to go down this road right now. And if you're if you're I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying that if you are thinking this, this is the reality. The reality is, is right now you're staring down the barrel of like, I want to be like X. And everyone around me will not want to be like that. They will not replicate that hard work. And if you do get lucky enough to find one or two people that are vibing like that, you fucking latch onto those people and use them for inspiration and you jam with them and you write music with them and you just grind with them because they will make it with you and you will all rise in the tide. And that's what would happen at Berkeley. But John Mayer was a guy who just sat down and pra if you're like, how did he play Texas Flood? He sat down and listened to his tapes of Stevie and he played to them over and over and over again. And when he worked at his gas station job, he had a guitar there sitting there in the gas station while he sat around to earn his pocket money or whatever he had to do to buy his guitar or to buy whatever gear he needed or to buy the album he wanted to listen to. And he would practice and practice and practice while he's working on the job. Practice and practice and practice. That's it. There was nothing crazy about John Mayer. He is a product of insane hard work. And then when he went to Berkeley, you got a machine that, you know, this is what I'm trying to say. We're trying to build the bandwidth of practice. He already had a bandwidth of being able to play guitar for like five, six hours, 10 hours a day. He's already got that. And so then when he got to Berkeley, all that happened was he just flipped the switch on the guitar playing. And he was like, fuck, if you watch his informa information inspiration, there's the things he doesn't say in it. He's like, oh, well, I wanted to be the best guitarist. He was playing a fuckload of guitar. Then he realized that he couldn't achieve that goal of being the best guitarist. So he's like, I want to be listenable. So instead of being like, oh, that sucks. You know, I'm going to just like play a couple of chill songs. He was like, no, that, that, that time never disappeared. That work ethic never disappeared. It just got turned into songwriting. So instead of him now practicing five, six, eight hours a day of guitar, it became five, six hours a day of writing songs, learning songs becoming a better songwriter, learning lyric writing, doing all that kind of stuff, collaborating with people, recording songs, doing demos. That's all he did. And then the the best musicians at Berkeley were like, who is this guy? This guy's insane. This is fucking cool. They wanted to hang out with him. Whenever they were all hanging out with John Mayer, he was still playing. Whenever they were doing it, he was writing. Like the guy did not stop working. And it only makes sense that he did one semester of that level of work ethic that Clay Cook, who was graduating, who's also very good, was like, dude, just come to Atlanta. We don't need fucking Berkeley. I've already done Berkeley. Let's just go. I'll show you whatever we need to show and let's go and make it. And then they left and they made it, you know? So right now, your biggest challenge is to build the bandwidth of practice. It's not about what you practice and do you do air training fucking one hour. It's none of that shit matters. It's like, can you handle a six hour day of hard work? and hard work practicing. And if you, when you come back from your holiday, that will be the big challenge. And you literally get a, 
get your phone. It's so easy. You get your phone, you get the clock app. And this is the best hack. You want to know what the best hack in the world is? You get your phone like this and you go stopwatch and then you go start and you start playing. And then every time someone calls you, uh, something happens on your guitar or you get distracted and you start playing something that you like, you go down a path of like, oh, I'm going to, you just start getting distracted, immediately stop and leave it. And then if you're doing a phone call, blah, 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 come back, I'm ready to practice again. And you start and you monitor by monitoring how much time you sit down and you'll, you'll find you'll be super surprised. You'll be like, wow, I thought I was practicing for two hours a day, but I'm actually practicing for an hour. And then what you need to do is if you can hit four hours of that, bro, huge. And then once you do it, you just set as PBs, man. You just be like testing yourself. Like how far can I push it? So that's a very, very realistic, actionable way to do it. But your goal from, from the point that you step in and be like, I want to get good. I want to get a scholarship to Berkeley. It's going to take about two to three auditions and it's going to take you getting ace because you want to, you want to walk into that. This is how you're going to win the Berkeley audition is you're going to get really good over the next two to three years. And in that two to three year period, you're going to do three auditions. By the time you finish the third audition, you would have most likely, how long does this academy program go for? Uh, I think it's four years. So if you finish that academy program or you're, pro, you're going through the program and you're just getting A's, I don't know what the conversion is, but for Australia, I had to get a, a GPA of a 6.0 out of seven. We have out of seven. So I had to get like, a, like an A, not an A plus. I just had to get an A. And if I got an A, it turned into a 4.0 at Berkeley. So basically when I was doing my audition, I asked the guy, I was like, what do I need to get a scholarship in my first audition? And he said, well, you need to be really good. And I, I need, we need to know that you um, know how to, to, to study and work hard. So your grades matter. As much as everyone might think it doesn't, like if you do not have all of these ducks in a row, you are not, like you're not a prodigy. Like that's which is already done. If you if you if you were having a conversation with me, you are not a prodigy. So no, that, yeah. uh, so that means you got to play the game against the prodigies. When Tony, my roommate, he auditioned for Berkeley, he got in because he's fucking good. And he was like, you know, since he was a kid, he was absolutely slaying. By the time he was like 15, he was like one of the best piano players in Canada, and he was in all the programs. He was absolute savage. And you can watch his stuff now. He's got like nearly 3 million followers. He's touring as a piano, neoclassical piano player. He is like God level piano player. He got the That's same amazing. scholarship as me. So it's like, you can beat this game because Berkeley is like, okay, you're either insanely good and then you're going to build our brand or you're an insanely good student and we know that you're going to be exceptional. Because it's a business. They don't want someone coming in and then leaving because they want you to go through the whole whole degree. Even if they do give you like a part scholarship, they need to know you will stick it out because there's still an amount of money that you they need you to pay to be a, you know, have the full lifetime value of the student. It's a business. It's not like, woo, inspiring. But you want to you wanna respect like that's the inputs that they care about. You're either building brand by you being a prodigy or you being an amazing musician or you having a brand as a socials. You like, you know, there's a really cool piano player who went in there, um, Jesus something. I don't know if you've ever seen him. He plays. Oh, you know. Yeah, fucking good, right? He's Colombian. Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, there you go. Boom. So like he was already like had a brand. He was already tour. Like he could have done whatever he wanted. He did not need to go to Berkeley. He's fucking crazy. He's he's had disgusting when i saw a video of him in a practice room at berkeley I'm like, what the fuck are you doing at berkeley dude you do not need to be at berkeley but he probably yeah. got some full ride and that builds the brand of berkeley because now he is a great content creator and a great musician he's posting content at berkeley it builds the brand of berkeley together so yeah, so there's a lot of colombian musicians who who, who get like a hundred percent scholarships in berkeley yeah. which is the other advantage I have. Yeah, so your goal is 
you're either going to be an insane musician and get the thing or cover every single base by being a good musician, a good student, a good work ethic, a good guy, all those things present well, all those other elements, that also gets you a scholarship. But you don't need the extra 10 years of prodigy music building and like making sure your dad was like a fantastic musician and showed you every single thing. Like the fact that my daughter is going to wake up, like my daughter is nearly two and she can sing solfege. <laughs> Whenever I change her nappies, I'm like, do, re, me. And I'll be like, do, and she'll be like, re, me, fa, sol. She does sol, la, ti. She's really good at sol, la, ti. She actually gets the notes perfect. So Dude. she will grow up with relative or perfect pitch. Yeah. So oh, how man. the fuck do you compete with people exactly. that, that do that? You can't. You can't. There's by only, doing good work. Yeah, there's only by two ways. There's only two options. There was either you grew up your whole life with a musical family that like taught you everything you need to know, blah, 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 all that stuff. Or you start today and you start practicing really hard. That's it. There's only two. After Cancun. After Cancun, after Cancun. yeah. So, <laughs> but but that, that really is how there's, there's no, it's so binary. But the other thing is, do not think that because you aren't at this level now, like you are not John Mayer now, that you can't be John Mayer later. You got to remember that you have lived your life and you are you and you are unique. And so this is the thing with Berkeley that not a lot of people think about. They're like, I need, it's about the music. It's about the person. You have all this experience that's happened in your life, whatever's happened in your family, whatever you've learned, whatever you've done, your work ethic, your experiences, all that shit, that will carry you in the future once you build the music as well. Because you'll be able to make decisions that other people don't do. Because some people just spend their whole life playing music, they don't have real life skills. They don't know how to interact with people. They don't know how to network. They don't know how to look good on a camera. They don't know how to. That is really sad. I know people who are like that. It's, it's sad. They're fucking weird, man. And like when I feel bad for them. Yeah, because they want to get the gig. Like I've met so many people at Berkeley that are so good, and they will never make good money. They they will never be able to sustain their lives because being good enough at music is just one element. Like Tony was so good at music, he had to learn how to perform. When he went to Berkeley, I think that's the biggest thing he got out of Berkeley. We did a live performance class, and it, I I use Tony as an example because I watched him. You know, I could like see him every day, what he did, and he he his band with like I said, he could practice six hours a day was just him breathing. How the fuck do you compete with people like that? <laughs> like you have to get that skill of being able to like six hours just I don't give a shit. Like six hours is like breathing. If you can do six hours of practice and it's like breathing, now you're starting. Now you you can walk on the court, like you can now step on and play the game. Till then, you're just behind the whole time. And then if you're trying to play catch up, if you're like, hey, I want to emulate John Mayer, what he was like at 24, and I'm going to catch up to him. You do whatever John Mayer did between the ages of like 19 and 24, and then you do double. So if John Mayer was practicing five hours or six hours a day on X, you'd be like, all right, what, is, what does 10 hours look like? <sighs> that, that There is no other thing. And then the coolest thing you have is you have someone like me through the accelerated program and you can just be like, bro, I'm working on this and I'll just tell you, do this. And I, all I literally have to do for you is just steer you. If you can get that work ethic down, you literally just post one video a day and be like, hey, I'm working on this. Or you can be like, you know how you're saying like figuring out what's the next thing I need to learn? You can be like, what's the next thing I need to learn the one? And I'll be like, go and learn this or go watch this video. Like you asked a question about transposition. If you're asking that question about transposition, it means you haven't looked at the theory course, go watch the theory course. Boom, there you go. There's your practice. That's your one hour of practice for tomorrow or whatever, you know, and then you apply it. So that's pretty much all I have to say when it comes to, to you and you achieving your goals and you figuring out what you want to do. You want to come into this academy that you're doing and you want to come into your practice. The version of you at 25 and 30 is built on the choices you make right now. And a lot of people walk around and they're like, bro, don't just chill out. It's your 20s. Go have fun. It's like, yeah, go have fun. But just realize that 
you could change your life. You could be 30 and have a, you know, a really easy, beautiful life by working quite hard in your 20s. And like we're going back to the distraction thing, everyone around you is going to be distracted with socials, is going to be distracted with their brand, is going to be distracted with getting contacts, is going to be distracted with games, going to be distracted with like boyfriends and girlfriends, is going to be distracted with drama, is going to be distracted fucking with everything, dude. Now, if you, that's seven things that take your time. And if you look at your phone and you look at your audit of like friends that you talk to, things like that, bro, if you look through how much time you waste, I won't say waste because relationships are great, but what you value, you figure it out very, very early on of like, I'm in a season of, I want to get fucking good. And if you're in a season of, I want to get fucking good and you eliminate every distraction, you watch as all your peers are distracted. You just like, just, it just goes like this. They just, Cause they don't change. They stay the same, man. So I'm hope- telling you, I'm going to have more fun at 30 partying with John Mayer and all the big stars than what I could have been but if, today. If, if you, if you say it like that, there is a roadmap to do it, but it is you got to pay the price. And those people, they, you walk into a room with John Mayer now, and there's plenty of people who are going to like, if there's going to be like mediocre successful musicians that you can talk to and be like, like, Oh man, this person seems like pretty clever or pretty interesting or blah, blah, blah. But the good musicians, they know what it takes and they don't give a fuck. Like John Mayer doesn't care about if you like him or if you, if you like his music or you play his song, John Mayer cares if he sees that you've written like a hundred songs and every time they get better. And then if he ever sees you, and he sees that, like if someone really good sees you, they're going to look at what you do and immediately they're going to be like, they're going to make the judgment. And then the first time they make that judgment, if the judgment is, holy fuck, this guy works hard. This guy's posting every day. This guy's practicing every day. This guy's writing songs every day. This guy's being like working super hard. He's posting story. Like if you can build a brand around hard fucking work, these these people love it because that shit is what made them get to where they got to now. Whereas a lot of people are like, what are they doing now? They don't go look at what, what did John Mayer at 19 look like? He looked like a fucking savage. He used to fucking practice. He used to go on tour in a fucking van and he was just sitting there sleeping on like a chair backwards and hurting his back. But then he hops out of that and gets on a stage and he fucking plays to everyone. And then after he finishes the show, he's signing autographs. He's interacting with every single fan. He's engaging in there. He's going to comedy clubs. He's learning how to engage with people through entertaining and comedy and all that. Like the guy was a straight up fucking savage. Like you just can't, can't ditch that. If you want to be the 0.01%, that's what you do. So that's all, all, all I pretty much want to say. <laughs> Hopefully that was a good lesson. And, uh, and, and gets you fired yeah. up. Fired up. Oh. It, it, it is getting me fired up. I have, I have I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was talking with my, my other musician friend, which I, who I, I don't know why he hasn't signed up for this free school. I think he just keeps on forgetting. I keep on telling him and, and he says like, all right, when I go to your house, you need to teach me how, cause I don't know. And I'm like, dude, it's simple. Bro, But that is already a sign. Like if people can't take such simple actions, to get to get better it you do not I, i'm one i love that you're sharing the school that's great but the if if people don't want to grow they don't want to grow sometimes they're just not ready for it and sometimes they just need time and then do you know what's going to be the number one factor of why someone would sign up for a school is you keep getting what? better and they don't that's it like you want to you want to like inspire your friends or you get your friends involved and you want you want to see them get good you just get really good cuz then by proxy they're like shit well i've got to keep up like if simon's grinding and simon's practicing and every time i see him he's just better like what how is he getting better because the problem you you challenge their identity like someone's going to be a better singer than you a better guitarist than you 
But if you sit down and be like, I'm going to be the best Simon today and you just work on your guitar and you work on your singing and they're like, I'm going to get better, 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 better. Then eventually you're just better than them. And then they're going to be like, what the fuck's going on? Like this guy like three or four months ago was like nowhere near what I did. And now he's like singing neon and he's playing all the shit and he knows all the theory. Like where the fuck did he do this? And then they might ask you or you just be like, oh yeah, I just worked at, did the school and then I practiced every single day for six to 10 hours. What what that a works. wild what a wild concept. While you were partying and you were like sitting there playing video games doing all your shit, like there you go. But it's easy. You know, the, the worst thing is that like this friend of mine who who he's the one who played in daughters with me. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think I know who I, I was surprised that he hasn't joined the school either. Because he would have done Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I think it's more not I think he's avoiding it like he he's like consciously avoiding getting into the school because he's a little shy but yeah. because I know he puts the work in oh, okay cool. I know he 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 doesn't go out to party he's not like the party type of guy he yeah. puts the work in he actually has he he just finished writing a song I, uh, which I, I I liked it was his first song nice that he wrote because a girl just like shattered his heart and he just like went ham on like just <laughs> and, and he just finished like so he's already he's already a step ahead of me in the songwriting part you know because yeah. he has already done a song i haven't i have a lot of melodies you know i have a not not melodies i have a lot of chord progressions yeah i just don't know how to like get the chord progression get lyrics or get like inspiration it that's just... so fine we like i said once you get back from cancun and you just post like you'll post in, in the accelerated and you just be like all right i want to you can literally just say i just want to work on a song here's my chord progression help me write a melody and i will help you like all that whatever it is you want to work on we will we will do that like we just had like mina and dylan just co-wrote I was like, yeah, what? I saw that. That was amazing. Yeah, so it's like the the level of creativity that you guys will have through learning, like being able to extract information from me, like that's also on you guys. You guys can figure things out. I am a complete open book. If you guys are like, I need X, I will literally make the shit for you. So like for, for now, uh, see, I, I have this problem, which is... Um, I don't I also don't know what language to use to write my song because I know how to speak English and I think that uh writing songs in English is easier than in Spanish. There's so many like uh uh reasons for that. Why but, not both? You know Yeah, that's what I'm I've been thinking. Like I I, no, I told my friend you imagine too much thinking. Just too imagine much thinking, if dude. we wrote too much thinking. You right now you're thinking. What you need to do is just write ten songs in English, ten songs in Spanish. No, but what I was thinking was, imagine if I could write, like, the same song, but in English and in Spanish, like the same chords, the same melody, the same meaning behind. It the same. Every, it works, just, but it doesn't work. So there's a famous song called Dudu by a guy called um, Tar Tarkan. Um, and then Holly Valance covered his song in English. And it was like a, it's a banger Turkish song, like fucking awesome. And, but then some, it just doesn't translate because sometimes if you're the writer, that's fantastic. But I'm just telling you right now, you're worrying about shit. You got to go write 300 songs. You're, you're immediately worrying about something that just does not matter. Like I said for you from the beginning, like your sole goal for the next like three months to a year is can you practice for six hours a day? That's it. With all the life happening, with every single thing going, can you practice for six hours? If that means you're songwriting, that's songwriting. If you're playing guitar, whatever. Your only purpose is can you do that? That's it. You do not need to think about it. anything else that you think is like like is building in your brain that's your brain immediately moving into distraction mode shit don't matter 
go write 300 songs, then come back to me and be like, how do I, how should I do English to Spanish? Or like, how do I, should I translate my songs? Bro, by the, by the time you write 200, 300 songs and the, some of them will be in, in like your native language or whatever, like, I don't know, is it Spanish, right? That you speak? Yeah, it's Spanish. Or yeah. is it Portuguese? I don't know the difference. I'm so bad with languages. No, no, it's, it's Spanish. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so you've got literally, um, English is like the more popular market, but Spanish is like one of the, is like the best market. So you, so in the future, oh. in like future Simon at 30, as a songwriter, producer, whatever, like that you might become or an artist, you having both of them under your like tool belt that any point in time you could write a Spanish song or any time you could write an English song. It's fucking crazy. You're just OP as shit, you know, like that you would look at someone like Shakira. Shakira would be like your number one person that you look at as a musician. Yeah. Cause she's she, Colombian. She's fucking amazing. And she yeah, understand she, she understands that, Hey, there's not longevity in English because in English, the, the turnover is so fast. So she had a moment in pop, but in Cologne, in Spain, people are, they love their people. They're like, Shishkiga is like fucking still posting music and they're hits, you know? Yeah. So you've got like this loyal community of, and that's, and actually arguably, I think there's more people that speak Spanish, right? Than English, I think. I don't know. It'd be something close. I actually don't know. But either way, like the South American community is like, Bro, if you're making music for them, they'll love it. So all of that shit, strategy-wise, we can talk about that in like two or three years. Right now, you know, only when thing... When I have started to, to actually... Only, you're, you're worrying about problems that aren't problems right now. Your problem is can you practice for six hours a day? So that's it. You don't need to think about shit. And and all of us are victims of it. I talk, I think about this shit all the time. You can even ask Dylan. Um, like I, t I talk about all my plans with Dylan all the time. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But the only thing I need to be fucking doing is writing school videos, right. live streaming, practicing, and singing songs. That's it. I don't need to do shit from there. And then once I build my business, then I need to start writing songs. That's it. Like, super simple, man. Get in there, learn how to do hard work. Learn how to work hard is the only thing you need to do. Because once you learn how to work hard, then you're going to learn how to work like a madman. Because you're going to have seasons where you're like, okay, this is my two a day. So two a day is when instead of, you're, instead of doing your four or five hour, you'll do like a five, six hour block in the morning. You'll wake up at five, six in the morning, start practicing, finish at like 10, 12. And then you'll hang out with your friends, do whatever social shit you need to do. Be like, I'm a human, let's go. Or you'll go to your classes. You'll finish your classes <laughs> at 3 p.m. And then you will start practicing from four or 5 p.m. And you'll be playing music until 10 p.m. And then you go to sleep and then you wake up and do it again. And you want to know that's how you become a great musician and you don't need to do it for a crazy amount of time you just need to do it till you catch up because once you hit a certain level you're good you know then you can start to choose then you can start being very clever with your your skill set and your time because you putting five hours into songwriting while you already have all the skills of like once you know how triads work once you know all the shit once you know a fuckload of songs you don't need more at that point you, like you can go and get more if you want to, but there's like a diminishing return. Like, you know, you know, in video games where you like get the really good gear and like you go from having shit gear and then you have really good gear and you're like, this is sick. But then once you go from like getting like you've got really good gear and you want to get like the little better pieces, you don't get that strong. The difference between a noob and a pro is huge. Yeah. But between but like then, the, the yeah. pro and then the like rank one person, it's like very incremental those steps, but gigantic amounts of time. So it compounds, the skills compound. So the beginning of the skills that you're going for to, the, to, the, to get to the pro level is going to happen a lot faster than going from a pro level of a skill to a really high level, like elite level of a skill. So once you hit the pro level, you don't really need to go farm those skills. You just need to go back and find all the holes that are going to get you to pro. So you'll be like, all right, got my harmony up to here. Perfect. Get my ear training up to here. Go get my like song knowledge up to here. Get my blues up to here. Get my jazz up to here. Get my singing up to here. Get my blah, blah, blah up to here. Get my bait, whatever you fucking want, you do it. But if you can like hit high levers on skills, then that's, and you can acquire great amounts of skills, then you'll be absolutely on fire. All right. Yeah. I got to get ready. I found... Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. What did you say? You found what? No, I found that uh, 
for me for songwriting uh every time i go out and walk my dog i usually went out with airpods on and just like hearing music yeah but recently i've been like going out without uh, music and just like walking walking and just like thinking and thinking yeah and through those walks i found like uh like uh, bits of inspiration to start songwriting so like i've got uh, like a little piece on a song right now i've got like the first two lines of a song perfect that's which, it which i could um i i did about two weeks ago and i haven't gone back since <laughs> but bro again the the biggest hole for you right now is can you practice six hours a day and and you your goal every week should be like did i hit one day where i practice six hours and you won't hit it for a long time and you, some days you'll hit three some days you'll hit two some days you'll hit four some days you hit five you'll be like, oh man if i practice for another hour i might get it and then you'll feel, like the more you do it you'll start to feel what it feels like to work hard and then your your brain will start to be like all right yeah it's time to work like it it'll stop telling you get your phone out it'll stop telling you let's go hang out with friends it's stop it literally will be like fuck this i don't care you know i think today i barely hit like an hour and a half practicing and i was i was home all day yeah it's like <laughs> it's you're going to find it's going to be the biggest challenge for you it is really 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 hard no one everyone says like oh practice six hours a day. It's, like, it's like bro then they, they say practice six hours a day and this is the things you need to do and like do all these and it's like no you literally need to just set a timer and just play for six hours a day because that's the hard part <laughs> like if you can't do that that's like fuck um and i only learned how to do it because i was getting paid to do it like some days i had to do a show in the morning for three or four hours and then a show in the afternoon for three or four hours and then a show in the evening till like two in the morning. So I had to practice. Like I had, I would literally had a guitar in my hand for like 10, 12 hours a day. I had to do it because that was my income. So I had to build that. I had to sing for eight to 10 hours in a day, which is like stupid, but I had to do it, you know, cause that's, I needed to, to earn money for my family. So, that's where you have to, there's only one way to go through it. You just got to go through it. And then once you can get that skill, you're like, sweet, I can handle it. But even now, I struggle to practice six hours a day. The only way I practice six hours a day, fucking go stream. on a stream. Because I'm like, <laughs> if I have to show up, I still have to show up, you know? <laughs> like, so I was thinking about uh, starting to stream. Fuck yeah. Like now, uh, now that I'm going to be... Uh, like, like now that I'm not in school, like it's the vacation, you know, like kind of a vacation in between not being in school and starting in this new thing. Uh, I can start streaming. The thing is, like, I don't have the the like the best equipment. You I know, got you, dog. Don't be... worry, it's coming out soon, soon, soon. <laughs> it uh yeah. The I am literally <laughs> I've been writing the course every time I have time. I've been scripting the videos, and next week after this so i get back on sunday so i drive out tomorrow i have to drive out to the outback and i come back on sunday um for the next two weeks i don't have a show so i, I don't have a show for so the next weekend i don't have a show and then the following weekend i have one show so i have like heaps of time, a lot of time. which is going to be yeah. really that's where i was like okay cool like just this week is right off because i have to do a bunch of like i had to sit at Dumb shit. This is the boring stuff. This is like annoying. You're like, fuck, I want to write. I want to write. I want to get this work done. And I'm sitting at like Queensland Transport trying to get registration for my trailer. It's so annoying. But um. So when I come back from Cancun, it's going to be ready? Yeah, most likely. Most likely I will at least have like at least how to live stream, how to do all the music production and then how to do b basic video editing so you can start clipping things up. Um, yeah, that would be great because I, I, I've gone like live... I used to live stream games. Yeah. Like, so you I had have an advantage. Account. Yeah. So you'll, you'll know how to do it. You'll at least know how to like set up OBS and things like that, which would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I know how to do that. Just, just like more of like the audio of the guitars and yeah, I, I don't know how to make it so that it sounds one good thing, and listenable. One, yeah. Don't worry. If you look at Dylan, he's been figuring it out 
and um and he's already getting like great sound so i will have like templates for you to set up like i'll show you how to use ableton so you can immediately get a good sound um and i'll have it all like saved that's how i was going to do it i was going to like show you how to do it yourself and then i'll just have the template saved so you can literally go into ableton and then you can just like copy paste it and it works which is okay which is going to be op Long before, before you go <laughs> before you go uh could i show you really quick one of the chord progressions i've been working on and get some feedback on that like i would well i have i've got like about 15 20 minutes to do work and then i have to hop on stream but i would just post post in the accelerated and i'll give you feedback right away um okay so oh you got like five, five seconds go quick while i set up well i set everything up and then you can you can do All right i'll just play <laughs> What is the part about it that you're like wondering? No, I, I just. <laughs> no, no, I, don't that, know. I, I only asked that question because um, there's core progressions don't matter. Like they, as long as they serve as an, they serve as an inspiration for a melody and a lyric, really, when it comes to songwriting. If you're going to sit there and just strum chords, they're just going to sound nice, you know. And that sounds very nice, listenable. I like it, but. The first thing that you need to do is just play that first little verse that you got there. Now stop. Now sing melodies. Wait, like over yeah. the Yeah, just like improvised melodies like do it da dun dun And find a find a melody that you might like. Just let's hear like three or four quick melodies. a fucking song there you go that's how you do it there's there's no magic formula it's just start writing now add words to that ba -da 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 -da, whatever you had there like be oh. like i'm walking my dog literally just say i was walking my dog and it was just <laughs> literally just do it serious try it <laughs> Walking with my dog, and it was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> did it, did any, but just like personally, because in your head, did you think of any other lyric that might come in, or a concept, or anything to start popping in your head by accident at all? Any inspiration uh. at all? Yeah. Because what's going to happen I, is... I've been wanting to, to write a song uh, with like a metaphor of 
of like uh, of like lights. You oh, you know? and we don't have to go into the detail of it. The point is, did you see how you just sang a melody and then you just threw random lyrics in? But because now there was an idea, you were able to put an actual theme. You were able to actually bring something in. So that's why a lot of people stare at the blank page and the blank page is terrifying. You know, they might not be able to come up with chords. They might not be able to come up with melodies. They might not be able to do anything like that. But what you want to do is just do it. And then once you just throw shit on the wall, like you want to think of yourself like a sculptor and that's how the songs work. Um, like as a songwriter, you you need to be able to have an idea. And so like say a sculptor gets like this gigantic fucking like block of like whatever the fuck it is. This gigantic block. <laughs> and it's like nothing. It's just like a square block. But as a songwriter, you don't even have the square block. You got to make the square block first. So that's where you just come up with the random chords, come up with the random melodies, come up with the random lyrics. Just fucking throw that block out there. And then you start chipping away at it. Like, well, what's actually what I want to do here? And then you actually build a vision for it. And then you start to really shape it correctly. And that's what the songwriting process really is about. It's not about being like, oh, I've got this great lyric idea. Once you write 150 songs, you just know how to make shit happen. So then you'll be walking your dog, you'll get a song lyric idea, write the voice memo, get into the room, go to practice, and you're like, I know exactly what the fuck I'm going to do here. It's going to be a one, four, five. It's a happy song. I'm ready. Going to start with one chord because boom, happy one chord. Bam. You will do that kind of stuff. But right now, just start doing it. You already started writing a song. That is writing. There is no fancy process at all. You just get in there and you just write the chords. If you have chords, you, know, you just write melodies and just throw yeah, shit at the wall. Yeah. Bunch of chord progressions just sitting boom. there waiting for me to Dude, just jump in there and sing like you saw with Mina, man. She had a chord progression, then she started riffing on melodies. And then, bam, there's Dylan's in there chucking in lyrics. Like, you just, if you don't do, you have nothing. And you can watch the video of me writing Wasted Years. This is straight up like the most, like, you want to see the most rawest process of writing a song? It's right there, me writing. That song. Yeah, it's like a bunch of people like the song. In, and the whole, literally from start to conception to finish is right there. You can watch the whole video and you can see me learning and figuring it out. <laughs> like me writing all the chord progressions, figuring out the lyric concepts, figuring out the melodies that I liked. It's all right there. And then the arrangement. Is that, is that on your YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Uh, so it's, it's on the... I, saw, I saw the Wasted Years um, like audio, but I think it wasn't on your main YouTube channel. I think it was on another YouTube channel. I'll post it in the school community for you. So okay. then, so you can watch it and be like, all right, this makes sense. There's, obviously, there'll be like shortcuts that I take because I know music theory and things like that, but you will see how you can apply it like right away. All right. All right, man. Look at you. You got a roadmap and you're going to write songs. Let's go. So get Thank hype, you, bro. Noah, You've got this. For everything, dude. No, it's my pleasure. Um, you're, you're such a... Today, I'm not going to be on the stream, huh? sadly. <laughs> Today, I'm not going to be able to be on the stream. Uh, that's why we got the extra time. Don't worry. Except it's yeah. going to... Except everyone who does the leaderboard now, they're going to be like, well, fucking Simon got like an, like an hour and 15 minutes. And we only got 45 minutes. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> All right, but, but no Man, one will know we'll, that. We'll cut it's, off the video. We'll cut off the video at 45 minutes so no one knows. <laughs> It just mid conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I'll see you soon, bro. Um, like I said, All right. you Bye, Luan. everything I said, it you don't have to do it. Just it takes time. Like all this stuff takes time. The mindset stuff takes time. It all takes hard work. It's hard work and practice. And once you get there, like anytime you're struggling, we're all here in the community. And you'll be like, Man, I'm having a hard time practicing. Like, I don't know what to do. And we're like, we got you, man. Let's go. We'll cheer you on. You'll be able to just post a video. Like, you ever, you see Trish. She's just like, I don't have anything. There you go. I, I, just, <laughs> I love that. I just love that. I love that she's thinking about music. She's thinking about the community. And she's accountable to her time. She's like, I get it. It is what it is. And then when she does have something and she does get that inspiration, she, she does start working hard, it'll happen. And so the same thing with you. We just need to brute force a lot of it. If we, right. if you want to achieve what you want to achieve. And then the other cool thing is once you taste it, once you taste what that work ethic looks like, 
you might be like, maybe it's not for me. That's what happened with me. I looked at it and I was like, I don't want it. I do not want it. I don't want a tour. I don't want to do anything like that. I walked in like, I walked into Berkeley and I was like, I'm going to write a hit song. I'm going to do all this stuff. My family friend was Cara Diaguati. Like, my, I don't know if you know who she is, but she's a very, very successful songwriter and she has like a really, really great uh, publishing agency. And he immediately, my he was like besties with my grandfather and that's his daughter. And he was like, I met her father and he was trying to like connect me with her. And I was like, I'm just not this guy. I never even met her. She came to Berkeley. I was just like, there's no point. Like I have nothing to offer this person because I am not the person that she needs. So you will learn through practicing and you will learn through doing um, where you sit and you will learn through success and you will learn through failure where you're like, I like this. I don't like this. And, and that's the beauty of what, of doing hard work. You will start to find, you don't have to ask the question of what if you're going to be answered. Or like, I know I don't want that. I watched those people's lives. I don't like that life. And you start picking the life, not the skill, which is the, the huge unlock. Cause you don't, you don't, I don't know if, if you like it, but me, man, I've got a daughter and a wife. I hate not being there with them. I hate missing out. So I'm like, there's no fucking way I'll tour ever. I don't give a shit. Maybe I'll tour if my daughter becomes a famous musician or my son. We'll tour with her. Yeah, we'll all tour together. And that's a different story. But I love watching them grow up. So I'll open your, your stage act oh, if you want me to. Or she'll open your stage act because you'll be at that point before her. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah here's the new strategy yeah well we never ever since he was two years old from <laughs> australia <laughs> <Don't rate me. laughs> no but seriously like that that is the music industry man it's just you figure out what you want and you're you're so lucky like i was lucky john mayer was not lucky john mayer's life was shit like let's be real they had gatekeepers they had like no resources they had to figure shit out on their own. They had to use like tape. They didn't have a lot of digital audio shit happening. Like you couldn't just pre-producing demos very easily. You couldn't be like, just think about how we interacted. Like we just hung out, man. And you came on a stream and then I built a school and now you're part of the school and now you're learning and you're getting better. Like what the fuck? There's no way you could have done that back in the day. He had to go to places like Berkeley and learn and meet people. And he had to go to all the clubs and do all that stuff which that adversity built up his work ethic. But, you know, if you can build up the work ethic and then all use the tools of your, of your era, bro, it's crazy. Just wait till virtual reality is real. That's going to be sick. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting yeah. for. I'm not going to go on tour, but I'm just going to be like a virtual reality mus musician. I want to be one of the first. <laughs> That's my goal. As soon as the text awesome. out, bro. 360 video studio. You put on your augmented glasses, lawns in your living room. Let's fucking go. <laughs> That's it. I don't give a shit, bro. And then we'll we'll have like a virtual stage where you guys can create your own avatars. And it'll be like a video game. You just come into there and hang out with us. And you guys can like ride Gyaradoses and stuff and fly around the, the stage and like hang out on stage and be like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> be sick. What's up, Luke? <laughs> I just I just can't wait, man. Sorry, I'm just getting on my my tangent of nerd shit, but. That's what I want. No, that's completely fine, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> I get you. All right, I'm, I'm going to kick it, rip it, bro. I'll chat to you soon. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have Thank a good you day. for everything. No dude. problem. You're changing my life. You bro, are. You're changing my life, dude. You're helping inspire me to work hard, so I appreciate it. All right. Stay out of, stay out of yeah. trouble. You. All right. We'll be in touch. All right. Bye, bro.